Gardens and First Christian is our church home. Whether we are gathering in, in our building or in virtual space like we are today, our church is sacred space where we welcome all people and all their God-given diversity. <laughs> so welcome to believers, to questioners, and to questioning believers. Welcome to young, young and old, and and everyone in between. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, gifts, and abilities. No matter who you are, how you identify, or whom you love, you are welcome here. Let's, Let's worship, worship together. together. Oh,
Today's scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8 and 17 and 18. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest upon each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, And your young men shall see visions. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in all those I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. Good morning, First Christian Church and all of our friends and family out there that are joining us for worship today. You know, this is one of those weeks when I feel inadequate as a pastor to really know what to say to you about all the things happening in the world today. We, of course, want to be people of hope and we want to be people that are optimistic, but what are we to do? What are we to say in the face of 100,000 deaths from COVID-19? This is the death of family members, spouses, friends, co-workers, community leaders, children, grandparents. What are we to do in a week when one of our own cities has been on fire, when the first match lit was by the flames of hatred and racism and intolerance? We've mentioned that today is Pentecost Sunday. If we were in our sanctuary today, this would be a Sunday we would often decorate the whole sanctuary in red. We would have streamers maybe and balloons. We'd invite the kids to come forward and put on party hats and blow noisemakers. We might even have a birthday cake after the worship service, but not this year. This year, that, you know, that sort of celebration, it just doesn't seem right. Not with 100,000 people dead in our country, not with a city on fire. Of course, the Pentecost story is one of wind and flame, breath and fire. And we're living that story this week, though in a way none of us would really choose. In the Pentecost story, the flames appear above the heads of the disciples in the upper room. That's a sign of God's presence with them. But what about the flames in Minneapolis? The businesses burn, the police station burn. What about those who lighted the flames, feeling it was the only way that their voices could be heard? Kneeling in silence at football games was just ignored or even condemned, but who could ignore the flames of injustice? In the Pentecost story, God's spirit is breathed into the disciples. The word for breath in Hebrew is ruach. And so in the Hebrew scriptures, God breathes God's ruach into Adam and into all of creation. Then in the New Testament, in the Greek, we have the word for breath as pneuma. God's pneuma, God's spirit, God's breath is breathed into the disciples, into the early church. But what does it mean to speak of sacred breath today? When we can't meet for worship because our very breath might spread the virus to our church friends. When hospitals struggle to find enough ventilators for the sick, When so many of us refuse to wear a simple cloth mask to protect others because we complain, it makes it hard to breathe. When those suffering in ICU beds from the virus struggle to get a breath. When George 
Floyd struggled for three minutes to get a breath, crying out, I can't breathe, while a police officer held his knee to his neck, taking his final breath away from him with an act of violent indifference. You know, I finally forced myself to watch the full disturbing video of George Floyd's final minutes. Afterwards, I didn't know whether I wanted to weep or to feel angry, and so I chose both. So today just doesn't seem like the right day for a birthday party, not with the mess of our world, the mess in our country, not the way things are right now. I just don't have the heart anyway for a birthday party. Though I was reminded this week that birth, birth itself, birth is messy. And if we as the church are constantly being birthed into a new thing by God's Spirit, if we as people of faith are being birthed into something new right now in the midst of pandemic, then we are also being called to step out into the mess of the world around us. Can I get an amen? We no longer have our church buildings, at least not right now, with their beautiful architecture and stained glass to shield us from the mess of the world just beyond the doors of the church. No, today, wherever we are, wherever you are, we're out there. We're the church. We're part of the mess of the world, aren't we? At least if our eyes are open and if we're willing to see those who are suffering, if we're willing to hear those who cry out for help. If we are willing to be part of the messiness of whatever God is birthing in us and in our world right now, then perhaps for us on this day, the fires of Pentecost become the fires of protest. You know, fire can burn things down, but fire can also reveal. Fire can purify and, and make a way for something new. What are the fires of Pentecost revealing to us today? How are they making a way for change to happen? What if the winds of Pentecost today are the winds of unrest in the world? Of course, if wind is powerful enough, it can destroy, but it can also uncover things, things that have been kept hidden. Winds can erode and shape and create something new. What if the Ruach, the pneuma, the breath of Pentecost, is our breath today? What if God's Spirit is calling us to, to breathe in love and breathe out justice? To breathe in mercy and breathe out compassion? To breathe in awareness and breathe out a living faith that steps out into the messiness of the world and does something about it? Of course, the trouble is, right now, we almost can't catch our breath. We can't catch our breath because there is too much right now trying to choke the very life out of us. We can't catch our breath because of the, the sins of systemic racism and prejudice, homophobia, transphobia, white privilege, isolation, violence, nationalism, ignorance, tribalism, hatred, scapegoating, and indifference. We are a world right now struggling to catch its breath. We're a nation right now struggling to catch its breath. We're a people of faith, a church right now, that needs to listen to the voice of all those who are crying, I can't breathe. We're a people of faith who need to listen right now to Christ calling to us from the cross in solidarity with all those saying, I can't breathe. God's breath is a gift to all of us, all creation. So how are we to respond when that very breath is being denied to so many? What can we do in the midst of this mess to be birthed anew as a people of hope, a people of peace, a people of love? What do we do to help pour out new breath, the breath of God's Spirit into a troubled world? That's the heart of the matter, isn't it? Well, maybe we begin today just by experiencing every breath we take as a simple prayer. Each time you notice your breathing in this coming week, what if you see it as an opportunity to breathe in God's presence and to breathe out a commitment to be a person of justice and peace? 
I also invite you to consider joining me for a church-wide study on the challenge of systemic racism, both in our culture, but also in the church. I'll be announcing details of this study soon, and I pray it will be an opportunity for us together to see how we are being called as a church to be a Pentecost people, people of the flames of God's Spirit, burning away all that would divide us from each other, revealing a way forward that calls each of us to be people of action, people of justice, people of love. My friends, breathe in and breathe out. May the breath of God and the fires of Pentecost inspire us in the days to come. And all God's people say together, amen.
Hi, I'm Carla, one of your church elders. Let's take some time now to be in prayer for one another and the world. Which people and places are on your mind today? Who are you holding in prayer? Perhaps take a moment right now to say those names aloud or share them in the chat so that we can lift our prayers together today. To center ourselves, let's take a deep breath and open our lives to the movement of God's Spirit wherever you happen to be in this moment. Let us pray. Source of life, as we pray today for the family and friends of those lost to this terrible virus, as we pray for healthcare professionals on the front lines, as we pray for essential workers, as we pray for those experiencing financial strain and lost jobs, as we pray for the racial divisions in our country, as we pray for hope and healing for all, we are reminded how your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. That amazing story leaves us wondering, would we want the same spirit to burst into our lives today like wind and flame? Sometimes we wonder if we are really equipped to be the true disciples of Jesus, like those on that first Pentecost. How can we not be overwhelmed by the needs of the world? How should we respond when the cries of people who feel threatened those who are in need, those who are in danger, those who are alienated, ring in our ears and in our hearts. What are we to do in those times we would just like to run and hide in our own upper rooms, hoping all this turmoil will go away? What does it truly mean to trust enough in your grace to allow your healing love to flow through us to those who are hurting? What does it really look like to allow your compassion to show through our lives in the ways we welcome and companion and care for others? Can prayers like these really open our hearts, our awareness, our very lives that we can be more loving, more merciful, more justice-filled, more open-hearted to others around us? Is it okay to even ask these questions without sounding like we truly don't trust in your love? Is any question too much for us to ask of you? Or is it the questions, the deep wonderings of our heart that draw us closer to you and your love for the world? Amen. Friends, in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, whenever we gather for worship, we eventually find ourselves around God's table of radical love and welcome. And so we invite you now to join us for a feast at this table. All you need is something to eat and something to drink, or you can join us symbolically. And as long as your table, wherever you are today, in your living room, your bedroom, is a table where all are welcome and all their God-given diversity, it is the Lord's table. And so remember with me now how Jesus met with his disciples, how he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, my life, which is lived for you, do this in remembrance of me. And we remember how after the supper he took the cup, and he poured out the wine, and he gave it to them saying, this is the wine of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. 
And I tell you, I won't drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink with you in the kingdom of God's love. Let us share in this meal together. And let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, that prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples using whatever words are most familiar to you. Our Creator, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we close this time together, remember God's love is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God's love is right beside you, breathing breath into you, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling but also open your life to joy and hope and love because, after all, love is the heart of the matter. Go in peace. Oh, no.